Education Secretary Arne Duncan raised eyebrows Friday by saying that Hurricane Katrina was, quote, the best thing that happened to the education system in New Orleans because it forced people to improve their schools. Educators everywhere want to turn schools around these days without resorting to acts of nature, though. And Russ Mitchell lays out the challenge as CBS reports where America stands. Despite decades of reform attempts and billions of dollars of investment, the American education system badly needs improvement. It's not where it needs to be. There's too many places that aren't doing well. The report card shows only 34% of eighth graders are proficient in math, 29% in science, 33% in reading. Compared to other countries, American students score near the bottom, 21st out of 30 in science, and it's even more bleak in math. They're 25th. One sausage. Those in the trenches, like Washington, D.C. School Chancellor Michelle Rhee, say the reason is not the kids, it's the system. In society, there is not a particularly high regard for education. The problem, educators say, our most talented minds head into medicine, law, and technology. A teaching career is often an afterthought, given the salary. The average elementary school teacher earns $50,000 a year. Physicians average 100000 more than that. Another problem is what kids are learning. Unlike most other countries that have national standards of what to teach, in the U.S., it's a state-by-state -state decision. These districts often face enormous management challenges. Andy Rotherham co-founded Education Sector, an education think tank. He says in many states, the standards are low. We had a public school system that served us very well for the 20th century when America had an industrial economy, basically an economy predicated on building things and moving them around. The economy's changed. And then there's the politics of education. Tenure and unions sometimes protect even bad teachers. And with limited funds, there's always a budget battle. For example, more money for a successful charter school means less for public schools. Too often people think, well, everybody in education is just all about the kids. But it's an industry like any other where you have a variety of interests. The end result? Only 70% of kids in this country graduate on time. In the District of Columbia, it's more like half. And it's not because the school system doesn't have any money. We spend more money per child than almost any other urban jurisdiction in this country. And yet our outcomes are at the absolute bottom. But Ree thinks she may have one solution for reforming education. Treat it like any other business. Make educators accountable for their successes and failures. If you don't succeed as a principal or teacher, she wants you out. When Ree arrived two and a half years ago, she inherited schools like Susan Middle. It was out of control. I mean, there were more children in the hallway than there were in classrooms. Um, all the kids were, you know, had hoods on, had their earphones in, swearing at teachers. We removed the former principal and installed Dewan Jordan. Kids running in the hallways, um, kids skipping class. Excellent, excellent job. This is Susan now. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Yes. yes. They fired a third of their teachers, instituted school uniforms and Saturday school. Last year, test scores were up double digits. 25% in math, 17% in reading. The kids love the school. They love being here. Today, our attendance rate is 98%. Okay. Ree says Susa is the model, but adds too many principals are not willing to change the status quo. They are, as a group, incredibly conflict averse. They just don't, they don't want people to yell at them. So she says they keep ineffective teachers in the pipeline rather than putting them on notice. All we have is a bunch of new folks. The teachers' union disagrees with Ree's philosophy, saying there are already methods in place to deal with bad teachers, and the tenure and other protections should not be ignored. I get yelled at all the time. People are picketing outside the office. You know, they're writing in, calling in, you know, whatever, saying this is, she's the worst thing that's ever happened. It sounds like it's also a battle every day, pretty much. It right? is. It is absolutely. Harvard University, where we got our masters, agrees that the key to reforming education is to start at the top. We've got a spring course, which will... This fall, it will offer its first new doctoral program in 74 years. 
in education leadership. What we want is um, to recognize that education is a business. Kathy McCartney is the dean. So leaders need not only a background in the education sector, but also a background in management. The Harvard program is all about management, taught in part by professors at the business school. Is that all the elements? No. Strategy? Yeah. Harry Spence is co-director of the program. Increasingly, principals are people who are really strong instructionally. They then move into the principalship and they're managing a very complex environment. Nobody's ever taught them how to, how to do that often. So Harvard will, immersing students in budgets and conflict resolution. And because well, Harvard wants to attract those who might normally be swayed by higher paying careers, the program is totally free. More than a thousand people have applied for just 25 slots. I think there's a real hope that in 10 years you'd see our graduates in senior roles in organizations that are making a real difference. If they're right, school systems will end up with better leaders who hire better teachers and American students may finally make the grade. Russ Mitchell, CBS News, Boston. For more on this story, you can log on to cbsnews.com.